Hey everybody, what's up? Uh, I've got a little tutorial here for the new year for you. And what we're going to do is uh, talk about color balance, uh, the switch node, and the Z combine node. Now, let's, if we go to our 3D screen here. Basically what I've got here, I've got uh, a scene, just uh, rocks on some snowy terrain, and then I've got a background image here that's uh, behind the camera. And if we look through the camera, what that it kind of rendered. See, I basically got some rocks on some snow in front of the mountains. And uh, if you notice, the rocks, the, uh, this is a painted texture I used for the snow and for the rocks. And if you notice the uh, painted texture I used for the rocks, it kind of has a brownish to it. And the snow, kind of like a grayish to it. And we want them to be kind of bounced color-wise to uh, with the mountains with the other scene because we wanted all the mesh so basically what I had to do is uh, we're gonna render out the rocks and the uh, blender scene separate from the background image and uh, you see here on the render panel I've got a render layer and I've got a backdrop and the render layer is just the default layer and that's what I put the blender rocks on in the snow and then I've got the backdrop <clears throat> so let's go to the compositor we'll talk about three nodes here it is rendered out and you can see like I said it's uh, still brown and uh, not matching the rocks of the mountain so we got basically the blender layer here is rendered out and then it's got an alpha and if you notice there's a little bit of um, alias, alias in here on the outside of that that's between the alpha and the actual image that was rendered out. To get out of that, you can create a larger image, a final larger image, and then just scale it down and you get rid of that. Um, there may be another way, but I found that's the easiest, quickest, and maybe the dirtiest way. And over here on this render layer, I've just got the backplate rendered out, the mountain scene. And we're going to color balance the blender scene to match the rock scene. And then we're going to combine them back with the Z combine node. We're going to use a switch node because one we're going to color balance and the other not. And we're going to switch it on and off. And I can jump between one or the other instead of having to go up here and mute it. And then go down here and mute that and then this one and unmute it to show you what I'm doing or what the differences are so that's the switch node it's pretty cool it's uh, here an add layout switch and uh, Z combine what basically what Z combine does is it takes two images in this case two rendered layers and composites them composites them um, depending on its Z value. So you take the Z value from one layer, excuse me, and put it in there with its image, and then you bring the Z value from that render layer with its image, and it this little thing calculates which one's in front of the other in relationship to the camera, because that is what Z depth is. Depth is. All right, so we're going to use this one as our color balance and we're gonna leave this one default to show you the difference so basically you've got the lift 
the gamma and the gain and my, this may not be right but this is the way I look at it because this looks like a regular color balance wheel uh, I'm not used to calling it lift gamma and gain I'm used to calling it uh, low tones mid tones and high tones or highlights uh, which it does here in the mouse over it says correction for highlights in very small letters correction for mid tones and correction for shadows okay so shadows mid tones and highlights um, okay so maybe this this is something different um, I don't even know what, how to do those but yeah evidently this is separate from the lift this is separate from the gamma I was thinking that was what it was called but anyway I don't mess with this and I just mess with these wheels to do color balance so first of all let's change the mid-tones to kind of match the color of the mountains so that these rocks look like they came from the mountains and I'm going to do that coarsely with my mouse and then later to fine-tune I'm going to use my uh, tablet because I can get a little better control um, you also can get a better control if you ramp it up pretty big or come over here to the side and use these because if you notice when you click on one the parameters for that node is going to be over here on the side in one form or fashion for some of them it looks like all right so uh, I think I'll just do it over here on the node so let's set the midtones so the rocks kind of match the mountains and it looks like we're going to go from a brown which is this area to a bluish gray which is kind of this area so we're going to kind of go in this direction let's bring it up there and I'm going to go right to the pen tab tablet just because it's a little easier um, now sometimes you have to get really uh, bizarre find out where you are visually like here I know that's really blue I go over here it is really turquoise and in between we're getting kind of close so if we back off uh, the ridiculousness and kind of come back here toward the center of the dial we can almost match that up Let's go right there for now. And then you've got an intensity here, which shows you how intense those uh, sections are. You can think of the shadows as kind of starting up here and on a graph. It would start up here and go down. The midtones would kind of take over during the middle of it and then hump over here to the highlights. The highlights would start back in here and and increase so there's overlap between the midtones and the highlights and between the midtones and the shadows so that's why it takes a little bit of playing around so now the highlights let's do the highlights the highlights are going to be exactly what it says the highlights and we want to know what our highlights are going to be that's too green and the highlights will be affecting the snow so we're trying really to get the snow right now to match the mountain And I think that's pretty close. Let's increase the t intensity of that. Just under where it gets blown out. And again, let's get ridiculous so we can see where we're at. That's too blue. So we're kind of back in the center. back in the center a little blue let's uh, increase that so see how it looks okay that's pretty good that's 
pretty much in the center. And let's uh, deal with the shadows. You can see the shadows here in the mountain are not pitch black. You can still see through them, so we don't want our shadow to be pitch black. And uh, But we do also want them to be kind of on the blue side. It's also going to affect the dark areas of the rock. So we don't want them too purple. We don't want them too green. That's look pretty good right there. Let's go back to the mid-tones. That's looking pretty close right there and you see I'm almost way into blue territory with a slight leaning of uh, turquoise for the mid-tones. Um, we can probably decrease the intensity of the mid-tones a little bit. Let's go back to uh, the highlights. Highlights are looking kind of bluish. Still a little bit not matching the snow, but it's looking better. And the shadows, uh, maybe we want to darken them up a little. Yeah, just a little bit. All right, so that's a quick and dirty color balance. Now we're going to see what it looks like from the original. You can see, uh, let's look at it first in the shadows. It went a little bit to the blue direction and decreased uh, the intensity a little bit. In the uh, mid-tones, I went heavy to the blue, increased the intensity. And the highlights went slightly to the blue and increased the intensity. So now let's switch it. So that's the original. And that's the color balanced. Now I wonder what I, this might be easier. Let's take, uh, let's take a viewer. I wonder what that shift uh, viewer does, or split viewer. I wonder if that would be better. Image, hey, I like this. We're gonna use this. Let's delete that. Split viewer. So, well, we don't have. Hmm. I we'll have to double this up. Shift D. Let's get rid of that switch. Bring the image in here, and this image in here. Let's see, I got the Z, the Z. and I got this image here. And let's see here. Okay, now we should have the identical thing here. And now let's go to the split viewer. Yeah, that's pretty cool. All right, yeah, so let's get rid of this. I like that. You can test out two things. It's even better than the switch node. I just learned that right here, right now. So, here you go. Um, on the left, you got the, the uncolor balanced side, and you can see the rocks and the snow is kind of brownish. The rocks are definitely brownish, and it just don't match with the mountains. 
but you come over here on the right side and you color balance it make these rocks look a little more gray snow a little bit bluer and, and whiter and you got a little bit better match and uh, it just makes your image more believable now if I were to really do this over correctly again what I would do is probably blow up this uh, mountain and take a swatch out and use that to color texture the rocks so they're they're identical and then same thing with the snow I'd find a white area with maybe some brown or rocks jutting through and then texture paint this and then I wouldn't really have to but there's other instances where you have to cal color balance and uh, this is a good example of, of what it does for you so thanks for watching any questions uh, just write them in the comments below thank you and goodbye